Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part 61 of my fitness database series. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to load the template data that we saved in yesterday's video. So, do you have to watch the whole series? No. Should you watch part 60, yesterday's video? Yeah, so you know how to save the template data, right? And like I said yesterday, the template data doesn't matter if you're doing fitness stuff or if you're doing orders or if you're doing scheduling or if you're doing underwater basket weaving instructions. It's all the same stuff. All right. So yesterday we learned how to take a day's worth of data and save it to a template table. Now, today we're going to load that back up so you can go to tomorrow and load it, go to the next day and load it and then just make little tweaks and changes. It's like in Word when you got like a like a, I have a I have two templates that I use for Word documents, right? I got my my business one and I got my personal one. And depending on what I'm writing in Word, I load up that template and then I just save it. And it's the same thing here, right? Okay. All right, so yesterday we saved our data into a template table. Today we're gonna load it back up again. So we're gonna go to a different day and then we'll hit a load button and all the stuff comes back. All right, okay. Let's make a button. Come down here, copy this button, copy paste. We're gonna call it load and then get rid of the extra space that access always throws in there. Okay, name the button. What do we call this one? Load template button. We'll call this one or save template button. We'll call this one load template button. I mean, should you keep your names uh, consistent? Yeah, don't call it George. You know, <laughs> call it something that's meaningful. All right, right click, build event back in here. All right. I'm gonna put the load button or the load button or the, the save button right here. I'm gonna put this next to the load button. So let's take the empty load code. I know Access tries to put this stuff in here alphabetically, but I like to keep stuff that's similar next to each other. There we go. Because we're gonna do some of the similar stuff. For example, we're gonna make sure they really wanna do this because we're gonna delete anything that's in the, the table at that date. So make sure we'll just change the prompt in here, right? We're gonna say uh, this will delete any food log data for date for, t for this date, right? The date shown, are you sure? And we'll make this one load template, okay? Then we're gonna delete the current day's data. It's gonna be similar to this one, but we're deleting from the current table, from the, the food log table, not the template table. So delete current day's data. All right, so they've said yes, so now it's current db.execute, we're going to delete from the food log table where, and it's gonna be the same where condition that we had down here, right? So just copy this, where this is the dates shown. So we don't have to retype all that, right? Just do that, see? And I like to put my where conditions on the next line. It's just a, as a matter of structure and, and form. All right, so delete from the food log table where the date shown, same stuff we did yesterday. Okay, so now we got an empty blank uh, form in front of us. Now we can read in the template data, but we gotta make a few changes. Okay, now for this, we're gonna use record set loops. If you're not familiar with the record sets, if you haven't watched the whole series, I've done a ton of record sets in the series. If not, go watch my record set uh, tech help video. I'll put a link to it down below. So we're gonna dim an RS in as a record set and an RS out as a record set. We're gonna read records in from one table and out to another table, okay? Now, I like to set up the outline. I like to set up the shell of this, right? It's a, give me the outer uh, dough of the donut first and then we'll put the creamy jelly filling inside. So let's set up the donut, right? So we're gonna set RS in equals current DB. Actually, we're gonna have uh, two database objects open. And when I do that, I like to make a DB object too, DB as a database. All right, so we're gonna say, first we're gonna say set db equals current db, okay? Now set rsn equals db dot open record set. Where are we getting the data from? It's just all of the records in the food log template, right? We don't need a select statement in here. So it's just food log template t. What's rs out gonna be? Well, we're just adding records to the food log t. So again, we don't need a select statement, just set rs out equals db dot open record set food log t. Okay, now I set up my loop. Let's let's worry about the rs in first. It's gonna be while not rs in dot eof, do some stuff. 
RS in dot move next wend and the while loop and then RS in dot close set RS in equals nothing and then we're all done with everything here set DB equals nothing and then we'll say uh, status done and then a beep and then we'll need to requery the records on the current screen so maybe before the beep we'll do a me dot requery so it updates the form and shows us all the records okay all right, so there's our outer loop with the RS in stuff. Now in the middle here, this is where we're going to add a new record. Okay, so let's put the creamy jelly filling in. So in here, is it creamy and jelly or is it just the jelly filling and then creamy filling would be like Boston cream dough. Anyways, um, RS out dot add new. We're adding a new record. And then don't forget, I always forget this step. When you're done, RS out dot update. All right, so this one's kind of like onions. It's got multiple layers. It's got two creamy. It's got a creamy and then a jelly filling inside the creamy filling. Oh, whatever. All right, so now in here, you don't have to end in here, but I like to. This is where I put all the field work, all the fields that we're adding. It's not technically like a loop or anything, but I just think it makes it more easily readable. Now, most of the fields were just copying from one table to another. For example, let's take a look at the fields here. Just move that off to the side. If we look at the fields in the food log, and the food log template, all right? Most of them are the same. We got um, the food log ID, which will be ignored. Um, the user ID, the food ID, the food date time and the food time text. We're gonna have to change those to the current date, right? But everything else is exactly the same. We'll actually, we'll set has eaten to false for all these new records. That's why we're loading it in as a template, assuming it's a new day, right? Quantity is the same. This is the same, meal description is the same, food description is the same, calories, fat, all that stuff. All these other fields are the same. So we just got to change a couple of them. All right, so what do we got to do here? So let's just work on the fields we have to change. So the food date time. So RS out food date time equals, we want to take the current date that's shown, which in this case is this field that's log date, okay? So I'm going to take log date and I'm going to add to that just the time portion of the food date time from the RSN table. So it's going to be time value of RSN food date time. See that? That's why it was okay to save the whole date time in the log table or in the, in the template table. Don't really care. All I care about is that time. And here is where I'll update it. So if the, if the template was saved January 1st and today it's November, what, uh, 15th? So we're gonna, we're gonna read it in and just change the date portion to today's date and then add that time back on. So we get 11 a.m. or whatever it was, okay? Now for the food time text, that's the displayed value for those of you who haven't watched the whole series. So it's gonna be RS out food time text equals, we have our own function for this. It's format food log time RSN food date time. And what that does, all that does is it takes the date and it just formats it as a string in this format here. So we can see that on the form. It's H-N-N-A-M-P-M. -N -N That's all that does. Nothing fancy with that guy. Whoops. All right. All right, the only other field we, we're gonna change is RS out uh, has eaten is always gonna be false. And now every other field that we need, we just get from the other table. And I'm not gonna type them all in. I already did, I have them in my notes. I'm just gonna copy and paste them. Boop, there's all the rest of the fields. Food ID, quantity, food log notes, meal description, food description, these are all the fields, right? Calories, fat, carbs, protein, all that stuff. Make sure you don't copy over the ID field even though it's in the table, because it'll generate an error message. Okay, and then when you're all done with this, burp, 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 burp. That should just about do it. Let's save it. Debug compile once in a while. Yes, I have that on a t-shirt and on a mouse pad. You can get that in my store. And <laughs> close it and open it. And let's give it a test. Let's go to tomorrow, which is blank. I'm gonna hit load. I will delete any food log data. Are you sure? Yep. Boom. There it is. And now I can copy it. And then I, you know, my breakfast is always the same. I, my lunch, I just change, add whatever new stuff I need to. 
dinner I just changed, how far did I walk, those kinds of things. And then I just make tweaks instead of having to go back to the previous day and then copying all the items individually. That'll save me some time right there every day, right? Cool. One more little tweak you can make for yourself. Let me go to tomorrow. Let me delete all these days. Uh, if you want to make yourself a delete button, you can for the whole day. I just I just think it's fast enough to just do this because I don't really delete whole days that often. I think I've, I've done it like, aside from teaching you guys, I think I've done it actually like once. So I don't really need to make a delete all the whole day button, but it wouldn't be that hard to do. Uh, and if, if you guys want to see how to do it, let me know. Post it in the comments down below and I'll I'll include it in a future video. But one thing that would be another time saver is when I hit load, right? Only pop this up if there is data up here. If not, don't bother the user. Just do it, All right? I'm going to hit cancel. So how would you do that? All right, you come in here and in the load button right here, only show this are you sure box if there's data for this day already. Why don't you take a minute, pause the video, see if you can figure out how to do it on your own first. And then come back and I'll show you my solution. We now rejoin our program already in progress. How many of you remember back in the day, like I'm old, I'm, I'm 53, back in the day when you'd, uh, when something would get preempted by either like the news, like a, a breaking news bulletin would come in or sports. And then they'd say, we now rejoin the program already in progress. And it was like, it was like that week's new episode of Star Trek Next Generation or something. And I was like, no, because we couldn't like find it online like we can today. Like there was no way to watch it unless you got lucky and they played it as a rerun in the off season. Oh, I'm, so many times that pissed me off. All right. Anyways. All right. What, did you get a good solution? Did you get it working? What I'm going to do, all I'm going to do is just de-look up and try to see if there's any record on the day in question. And if so, then show the message. If not, don't, right? So we're going to dim ID as a long. ID equals NZ, D lookup, food log ID from the food log table where. And guess what? The where condition is this again, right? Burp. And then we got to close that comma zero. And something's not right inside of there. Oh, I forgot an opening little doohickey. All right. So we're going to D look up a food log ID from the food log table where the food date time is the day in question, the day that's currently visible on the screen. If one exists, it will return the ID. If not, NZ will convert that to a zero. So if ID is not zero, then do that. Otherwise, don't bother the user. Just do it. Just do it. Remember that video with the, who's it, Shia LaBeouf? Just do it. <laughs> All right, debug, compile, save it, close it, close it, save it, open it. All right, let's go to a blank day. Hit load, boom, and there's your stuff. No prompt required. If I hit load again, it says, are you sure? No. All right, see, that's pretty cool. Now that I'm doing this a bunch of times, I kind of want a delete button, but I, in practical use, I never use it. All right, now some of you astute viewers might have noticed that in the intro slide, I got a little drop down box or a little combo box, right? All right, so in the extended cut for the members, we're going to build this guy so you could save multiple templates. So you can have multiple days like I got a workout day and a non workout day, right? Uh, if you're doing orders, you can have the Christmas special, the 4th of July special, you know, you just click that and it loads all those items in. Uh, if you're doing schedules, right, a Monday schedule, a Tuesday schedule, a Wednesday schedule, if it's a Wednesday, load that schedule in. All right, so we're going to do multiple templates and we're going to future proof our record set. What does that mean? Well, that means instead of listing all of these fields in here, I'm going to show you how to just loop through the fields in the table and just add them all. This way, if you add a field in the future, you don't have to worry about adding it to all your code everywhere, right? You just add it to the source table, add it to the destination table, and then your code automatically just sees it there. All right, so that will all be covered in today's extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cuts, all of them, lots of them. 
and uh, gold members can download these databases and you get access to the code vault and everybody gets a free class every month and everybody is happy. So click that blue join button right now and you can be happy too. <laughs> but that's gonna do it for your tech help video for today. Post a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.